I'm David. That's Jason. Today we're joined here with Natalie and Casey Neistat. Casey's a former YouTuber and entrepreneur. Don't say former. <laughs> I posted three <laughs> videos this week. That. Why would you say former? It Are, hurts my feelings. I don't know. I th- because how about you could say former daily vlogger. Former daily vlog. Okay, that, this is the most fucking interesting thing in the world. Okay, go. And I, I, every time somebody like asks anything about you and they don't understand who you are, okay. I go, yeah, he used to daily vlog. How long did you daily vlog for? I think I did 800 episodes in a row. 800 wow. fucking wow. days in a row. You never missed a day. I never missed a day. I don't know if people listening understand what that is. So for 800 days in a row, so almost three years, he posted a new video every day. And who was editing those? It was all me. 100% all, me, yeah. all you. That's 100%. like he ran a That's marathon crazy. for 800 days in a row. But it's, uh, yeah, it's actually, it's probably exactly like that. What was your sleep process like? When were you editing? When were you waking up? I mean, How far ahead were you ever? Never ahead. Never ahead. Never ahead. Day of, day but, post. I mean, it's really interesting watching you, David, make your vlogs because it was, mine was were so deliberate. Like I got to a point where I'd shoot maybe 30, 35 minutes worth of footage for a 10 minute episode. Wow. And you're shooting like, Five hours. For a four minute episode. <laughs> so I always knew, like even when I was saying to camera, I always knew it was always really deliberate. Yeah. So my editing was complicated and it took a long time, but like I knew exactly what I was doing. It never felt like a fishing expedition. Like yeah. the way you're sifting through your footage looking for those nuggets of magic. Sure. And when would you go to bed and when would you wake up? Because that was interesting would, to me. Yeah. Typically like get really slow at the edits by like 10 or 11 at night. And okay. then I'd go to sleep and I'd wake up at like four in the morning. Because at four in the morning with like a pot of coffee, your fingers move so fast across the keyboard. And I'd be like twice as productive. Every day you'd go to bed at 11 and wake up at four. Yeah, usually. It was for like 800 that. days. Yeah. My upload time was 8 a.m. every day. And I remember like I would hit that so on the nose that it, by 8.01, the like tweets being like, where's the vlog would begin. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And the minute it was posted, my brain shifted and it was done. Like you don't watch your old videos, do you? I do, but I know exactly what you mean. Like, Whereas, like, I haven't thought about it. You don't think about it. You yeah. go on to the next one. Immediately, your brain has to be on to the next one. Yeah. And that would start at, like, probably, like, 10, 30, or 11 in the morning. So between 8 a.m. and, like, 10 or 11, I'd, like, run and, like... And like, how many miles a day would you run? Like, 10. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. What the Ain't that fuck? fucking insane? Well, that's when you come up with the ideas for the videos. I need, like, that hour and a half of running to, like, figure out what today's video is. And how are you not tired? I don't know. And then I met Casey, and I was doing three a week, which was a fucking crap ton. And, but Casey was like my idol. And I met him, and he came up to me, and like he, he saw a couple of my videos, and he goes, I need to talk to you. And I go, yeah, what's up? I was like so fucking excited to hear what he had to say. And he, and he goes, you need to go daily. Start <laughs> uploading Christ. daily, and your channel will blow up. And right after, like, I didn't even think, like, I went, I went, like, <laughs> to my own little corner and I texted all my friends in a group chat. And I was like, guys, I'm going daily. And I remember, like, I, I, I don't know who it was, like, Corinna or Carly or someone responded in there and they were like, are you sure you can handle this? Are you sure you can go daily? And I was like, yes. Casey said, we have to go daily. I know this is going to be a lot of work on all of us, but we have to give it a shot. I was so fucking excited to do it. And I didn't even, I couldn't even do it. To uh, qualify that day. though, like your, I was watching your videos then, you were doing like 150, 200,000 views a video. Yeah. And there were, um, no one on YouTube was doing anything like what you were doing, but it, your growth was kind of slow. Sure. So it's always been slow. Yeah. It, it, it was slow then. And like, I knew the way people were reacting to my content was because like every day they'd want to know what happens next. Like what happens next? Yeah. And my thinking with your content was like, your content was not as intensively produced as it is now like i see what it requires for you to make a bit now back then it was like way more casual yeah so i just thought if you turn the fire hose on that like you would have blown up way faster sure but it probably would have killed you and then i, I would i would have literally died because I, I was going i was i was posting three a week but at the same time it felt like i was doing every day and then i remember i talked to you when i was like casey i think i want to do two a week you were telling me you're like when you stopped daily vlogging what did you what did you tell me that it felt like yeah i mean i don't remember the language I use, but I know that like I used to fight because I had to go seven days a week and like my wife and our marriage counselor was like, how about just five, Mm. just five. But the minute you realize you don't have to do seven days a week, the entire like bubble bursts, like this weird thing in your brain. So my advice to you was like, yeah, stop doing three a week. You'll be more human. You'll sleep better. You'll be a happier person but you'll never get it back. <laughs> yeah. Mm. There's no, there's nothing more accurate than that. You'll never get it because like, I knew that. I, I knew that when I was like, I'm about to drop to two and I know that I'm not going to be able to even sustain two because I was always procrastinating. Like that's, I was always like on a treadmill, like nonstop running. 
And then when I lost my rhythm, like everything fucking fell yeah. apart. And you told me something, or maybe I, I don't know if I came up with this, but like once I, when I stopped posting three times a week and I went to two times a week, it felt like I left a different world and entered civilization. Right, you became a human again. It I felt I so it fucking weird. It felt like I literally felt like a person and I didn't like it at first. I was like, I almost felt like I had like no purpose anymore because I felt when I was doing three weeks, I literally felt like a machine. I had no purpose but to construct and put these videos together. And then when I and then when I gave that up, I, I was like, I literally felt like I like my hoverboard gave out and I landed back on earth or something. Like, and I like I'm looking around me and I'm like, mm. I can like smell the flowers again. And That's I was like, like when you leave town. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> the way the way that I care characterize it like those 800 days the way i characterize it is like it was the most miserable trying lonely angry time in my whole life but by far the most fulfilling because like this like life's really hard but when you know exactly what you need to do and then you do it it's really satisfying mm. so to wake up every morning and know exactly what i needed to accomplish that day and then to accomplish it was amazing yeah so when i if if ever i took a day off you're like, what's my purpose today? Mm -hmm. And when the cadence and the return is that high and that literal, like you have a video, you have something to show for that day. Or in your case, like every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you have something to show. When you remove that from the equation, like what am I doing? What's the point? Like sure. what is my purpose at all? Did like, you feel like you were putting the videos? I mean, I know the answer to this, but did you feel like you were putting the videos before Everything, like everything. With my kids, my family, my health, my life. Really, every, my happiness. You'd say even you'd go as far as kids. No question. Wow. No question. And I will tell you, um, like I stopped putting my my kids in the video, like when my daughter turned one. Like I just don't, I don't like putting kids in videos. And um, it that really like affected me because I didn't know how to like capture or share that aspect of my life that was my family. And then I felt like like the episodes were more disingenuous because I was like hiding a big part of who I am from mm -hmm. the audience. Yeah. Do you think um, David has a problem with balance in his life? I don't know. I think David is, is a way different scenario than what I dealt with because for me it was all the content was about me. And like, I think the hardest part of it was that I was, I was so jealous of that. I would always say like, I wish I can just go out by myself and fucking just do it and get it done on my own like Casey does. I was like, I just want to get on my board and fucking shoot the day away. You don't have a board. I don't have a board. <laughs> but Casey had a board. So I was like, I want to do that. No, but I always, like, I wanted a job that 100% depended on me. Mm -hmm. Like, how much work I put in, that's how much I got out. And that's what I was jealous of Casey. But I also really loved what I was making, so I wasn't complaining. And mm -hmm. I could have easily switched it around and been like, okay, I'm just going to vlog about me. But that's, that, that's not what was fun. But I always admired that Casey can get exactly done what he wanted to get done. The easiest place for me to make an episode was just to go into my office because I could always find eight minutes of interestingness there. But what I was saying is it's like when it becomes just about you, you're always like like pulling the interestingness out of yourself, your personality, your life, your relationships. Like you're pulling, you're externalizing all of that. Mm -hmm. And after a certain amount of time, you're just like, there's nothing that you've left for yourself. I saw a video of yours where you were in a car and you were like, I am creatively depleted. <laughs> I have nothing left. Do you remember this video? I mean, I remember saying that. I couldn't tell you which video. I yeah, I don't remember what video it was. And I remember seeing it and being like, whoa. Same. Like, yeah, same. <laughs> and also, like, he's really showing everything. And I, I thought, I was like, I wow. Had, and that's why I fell left. in love with you. The best, like, wow. the best way to describe, like, being in that, like, the intense video mode like you were doing daily night when I was doing three a week is like it is there's not a better word to describe it than addiction I feel like it's an addiction it, absolutely it, it's a codependency yeah like you can't exist that was like, that. that was my purpose like that's how I was plugged in to my purpose on earth was me making these videos and and the more the more people would come up to me and go how the fuck are you doing this like why are you posting so much that would only fucking fuel me oh, so yeah. much more when someone comes up to you like you should get some sleep like that what that, when someone tells me that i go fuck like i'm doing something right if you if you can notice that i'm working so hard that it looks like i'm not sleeping that makes me want to fucking go 30 times harder <laughs> and then uh there's a weird hero complex there but the thing You're that on I like think, a high. Yeah, it's the thing exactly that's, that's different about your your content is that because you're not giving yourself up, you're drawing from like external sources, outside sources. I feel like yours is scalable in a way that a vlog about someone's life could never be. Where do you think YouTube stands in terms of television? I feel like you have like a well, defined thought on that. 
I think that like people love to say TV's dead and all that, but I, I think that um, like the real threat to regular media is the fact that like your little sister and your little brother, like to them, what they watch on their phone is just what they like. And they don't identify it the way that like we do, the way that Jason and I do, mm. which is like, this is TV and that's a movie and mm. this is YouTube content. Like to my daughter who's five, it's just like, that's just, she just watches what she likes. Mm-hmm. And JoJo Siwa is like her favorite show. And to her, like the fact that that's on YouTube and not Netflix or not Nickelodeon yeah, means nothing. She has no idea. Right. That's her favorite show. But in like 10, 20 years, do you think that YouTube is like some sort of bubble that will pop or do you think it's... You think no, it's... I think it's just going to like, I think it's just going to keep getting better and better um, for creators, I think. But uh, to me, the only thing that like the big question is from a purely like capitalism standpoint, which is like, there's no way that David Dobrik at Hollywood 23. Yeah. There's no way that like a 23 year old who's just one guy should be able to have an audience that's like, I don't know what, what MTV does for viewership right now, but I would say your audience is probably five times what that entire network's audience is. And I just think that like, they're going to have to fight back like, these established entities are going to have to fight back to reclaim some of like what they've given up to creators. Otherwise, they're just going to kind of lose. And those are really valuable businesses. How would they fight back? I don't know. You know, like I think that like the late night shows, the Jimmy Kimmel's, the mm-hmm. Fallon's, like those guys have done a really good job. Yeah. yeah. You look at to. the number. They're like, fuck it. We're just going to go to where the eyeballs are. And the eyeballs are on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So they like compartmentalize little bits of their show. They put it on YouTube and it slays. They're doing millions and millions of views. That's more views than the actual broadcast shows get. Mm-hmm. Like, that's smart. That's really smart that they did that. They're going to where the eyes are. Yep. And I just think, like, they did that not because they wanted to. It's more valuable for them to keep that stuff on TV, but because they had to. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, as that happens, it's going to get more and more challenging for the little guy to compete because they have more resources. 